Hey guys, it's Eric with the Film Photography Channel. Let's take a look at Real Raw once again, this time with ViewScan. The Real Raw process, uh, as I outlined it in Silverfast, uh, is a process by which you capture a film scan, okay? Uh, and you capture all the data that exists on the film. The red, green, and blue channels, in addition to the infrared channel, the infrared channel holding dust and scratch information. The reason for this, or, or the, the whole premise, is that if you can encapsulate every bit of the film, the color plus dust and scratch information, you can correct everything. You can correct the color, contrast, remove dust and scratch uh, information electronically, and you've got, in essence, an archive of your film. You literally can toss your film away if you choose to do so. You don't need to keep it because you won't ever be able to capture more information than you have captured in this uh, and what what uh, I call real raw in ViewScan is called RGBI and Silverfast is HDRI, but both are synonymous for uh, you know the same type of scan. So what happens just in a nutshell, and I'm gonna go to the to the desktop software in just one second. I just want to give you like an overview. Um, the way that ViewScan is different from Silverfast is ViewScan uses the the same app to do both uh, processes. That is the, the analog hardware scan of the film, uh, which normally would happen in Silverfast AI uh, app. And then the, the uh, scanning of the file that, that contains the RGB and infrared channel, that in Silverfast, that's scanned under Silverfast HDR app. In ViewScan, it's scanned inside the same app. The way ViewScan differs is you simply change the source Okay, the source uh, starts off as your scanner. You do your scan, you know, you capture all the information, and then you, you change your source to the files. Okay, the files that you just created with the initial scan. And then you can uh, import those into ViewScan, run a preview, and ViewScan will show you all that data that, uh, you know, that you just finished scanning with your, with your uh, hardware scanner. So it's a pretty neat process. It's a little more succinct. Um, and, you know, and, and as much as you only are using that one app, you're not using two. And I'll mention another thing uh, in terms of uh, the way ViewScan handles or controls the scanner. Uh, it, it's pretty efficient, uh, for a, especially for a scanner that you feed the film through. Like um, my Prime Film XA, you guys have seen a review of that. And that Prime Film XA, Prime Film XA you have to feed the film through there a frame at a time. You feed it, it previews, feed it, it previews. But in Silverfast, um, and this is noteworthy, in Silverfast, it, you have to feed the film, the entire length of the film, in one direction to allow Silverfast to count how many frames are on there. So it does this really slow thing where it, um, it you know, bzz, feed, bzz, feed. And it's always doing is counting. And you can imagine for 36 plus frames, it takes a while because it counts all the way to the end. And then it does the same thing coming back. And it's like one, you know, one at a time, one at a time. So, you know, as they say, if you're in a hurry, don't shoot film. But it's uh, it's still noteworthy that the way view scan works is it feeds it, scans, feeds the next one, scans. It never does that thing where it goes to the end and comes back. And, I, you know, I'll, I'll hazard to say also that it's just a little bit quicker, even with the feeding, just the control of the scanner is just a little bit better uh, under, under ViewScan. And it makes more sense the way they do it. That being said, ViewScan's got this interface that is just, you know, like straight out of 1990. You know, it's like a text, it, you know, text-based interface. Um, it's not very intuitive. I've had ViewScan for a long time. I, I don't use it that much, but I've had it for a long time. And it's, you know, as long as I've had it, you would think I'd know how to use it a little bit better, but it's just not the case. It's just not that easy to use. And um, the other issue that I've got with ViewScan, the reason I kind of migrated to Silverfast is that ViewScan, um, the colors, I can never get the colors great uh, using ViewScan. Every ViewScan video that I've ever watched, and there's not a whole lot of them out there, but uh, the few that I've seen, 
in every case, the whoever's you know making the video, they always do their scan like in a flat profile, like a you know low contrast, low saturation, low sharpness uh, scan, and then they bring it into like uh, perfectly clear or uh, a Lightroom or something, you know, some other uh, software or Photoshop, of course, to finish the color. And that's certainly a, a technique, but now, you know, that's like a whole nother app, but whatever, you know, it, it you know, you can get great color from those apps. Um, but I, I could never get, uh, you know, very great color. I mean, I get uh, certainly acceptable scans, but uh, Silverfast just you know, it just gives you that color just like right away. I mean, it's like night and day with uh, Silverfast versus a view scan scan. But again, you know, there there are some upsides to uh, to view scan as well. I really like how it controls the, uh, especially my Fed uh, scanner. You know, versus uh, a flatbed scanner. So, uh, view scan certainly controls the scanner better, and so it's got its uh, you know, it's up, up its highlights. Uh, it's up and downs. The file size seems to be a little smaller when you're doing these archival type of scans. So that's uh, also an upside. Uh, but anyway, so that being said, let's take a look at the uh, the desktop interface and, and I'll show you how I go about using uh, ViewScan and what, uh, you know, and get everybody a little more familiar with uh, this uh, this process. This is what I mean. You know, it's got a pretty basic drop down menu interface uh, so what we want to do first we want to run a preview and this is a, a hardware scan that's happening right now we're scanning the um, the film the actual film itself and you'll see a lot of familiar stuff here uh, like you, you tell the scanner software what type of film is is being scanned uh, you can set your um, output uh, resolution you know that's all pretty standard stuff for scanning you'll see down there where it says raw type file raw file type 64 bit rgbi uh index file just gives you like a, you know some thumbnails of uh, whatever it is that you're scanning and as you can see like i mentioned before you can create a tiff a jpeg even a pdf uh dng all at the same time in a single stroke you can create all of, all of those files which is pretty powerful actually all right, and um, okay, so going back to the input, uh, as you see, 64-bit RGBI, uh, bat scanning is on. This is a, a point of contention here. This bat scan thing doesn't seem to work 100%, so I just go to list. I use list, and uh, I tell it to list from, you know, frame one through infinity, you know, using the, the asterisk to denote that. So let's go into the preview scan, and what will happen here, uh, and this, by the way, is sped up. Uh, by literally 3,000% because, uh, you know, it takes a whole lot longer. To, it takes about two minutes to scan each frame. So what I did is just sped it up pretty dramatically just to get through it. The uh, the little ant trail here allows you to set your, your borders and your framing. So you, and you can go through each one of those, and you'll see the navigation arrows in the bottom right corner are available now since uh, you've scanned more than one frame. So you go into the actual scan, and this is where you create your RAW file. Okay, this is where your RGBI RAW file gets created, along with the index file, along with any other files that I may have checked. Um, so again, sped up thousands of percent, and let's we'll take a look at what comes out on the other side. And the uh, the end result here, or not the end result, but the uh, what you're going to end up with here at this point in time is going to be your your raw file. Okay, the raw file again it, it contains the RGB, uh, red, green, and black information and the infrared information. It's all in there. Take a look at the index file. That's what that looks like. The colors are muted because this is a a raw scan. Uh, same thing happened in Silver Fast. You get these dark colors um, that are not indicative of how you're going to end up. But uh, all right, so what I do, like I said earlier, I change the source from the scanner to a file. And I get the navigation uh, me menu now. Open that up, and I just select individually each one of these raw files. All right, and you just kind of have to pick them out of a out of the lineup there. Um, so I think there was six files in the scan. So those are the six. I open those up, and now they come into the view scan software where I have to run a preview. So I run the preview, 
And this is actually in real time because this now we're not dealing with hardware. We're, we're you know dealing with a file. So the preview scan happens first. Again, your you the software allows you to uh, create the uh, or adjust the framing. And from this point, you can adjust the color and do whatever it is you need to do. And you'll notice up there, you'll, you see the list of files under under the file box. Uh, so yeah, th from here, it's pretty straightforward stuff. You know, you can flip, mirror, do color adjustments. There's presets that you can use for your, uh, you know, for the different color. Um, and this is a weak point in, in as far as my capability with ViewScan. I am I have not been able to get great color from ViewScan. Uh, you know, versus Silverfast. So that that is a point of contention with me. But again, there's always a technique that you can just kind of create a, a flat file, take it into Photoshop or Lightroom and get great color out of it. All right. So, uh, you know, I mess around with the color for a little bit, but at, at this point, uh, let's go ahead and just scan. And again, this is a real time scan. Uh, you just, you know, again, choose where you want the scan to go to. You can put some EXIF data in there if you want to, the name of the camera, the date. You can actually, ViewScan actually lets you change the date, which is pretty strong also, especially with film, because you hardly ever develop film the same day that you take the photo. Um, yeah, and then from here, we go ahead and do the scan, and now it's scanning each individual picture and creating the files that we told it we wanted to create. And there they are. And it, this, this, these photos were taken with a retina. I forgot to change the file name, the preset file name. Uh, so they came up Nikon FE, which was the previous camera that I used. But so I imported into Lightroom, and from this point you can see, you know, what uh, the the color adjustments that you can make. And at the end of the day, like I said, uh, Lightroom will be great for, you know, fixing the white balance and, you know, adjusting your contrast saturation and all that. So it, it works great for that. And um, so in any case, you guys get it. This is this is really about uh, as much useful information as I can provide. But uh, Lightroom will will uh, finish this these photos off and give you great color and, and so forth. It's just an extra step. It's not the end of the world. And for literally one quarter price uh, of Silverfast, you have what in, it's basically the same capability in ViewScan. And just take a look here. Some of these photos came out great. And, and these are taken with a Kodak Retina uh, 2C, which is a pretty old camera. It's a uncoded black and white lens. So it's not, you know, you're not going to get like a, a modern rendering or anything like that, but you'll get decent, uh, decent color and, and decent sharpness out of this camera. And one of my favorites, it's a fun camera to use. So in any case, there you have it, guys. Hope you got something out of this. And like always, guys, I appreciate you all stopping by and checking out my channel. If you got some good information out of this, please drop a like and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Share me on your social media. I'm trying to build up my uh, my subscriber base here. And um, the more you guys share, the, the more that'll happen. Okay, so this is Eric with the Film Photography Channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Bye.